Camilla, born Camilla Rosemary Shand, later Parker Bowles, the 17th of July 1947, is Queen Consort of the United Kingdom and 14 other Commonwealth realms as the wife of Charles III. Camilla became Queen Consort on 8 September 2022, after her husband's accession as King on the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Camilla was raised in East Sussex and South Kensington in England and educated in England, Switzerland, and France. In 1973, she married British Army officer Andrew Parker Bowles, with whom she has two children. They divorced in 1995. Camilla and Charles were romantically involved periodically both before and during each of their first marriages. Their relationship was highly publicized in the media and attracted worldwide scrutiny. In 2005, Camilla married Charles in the Windsor Guildhall, which was followed by a televised Anglican blessing at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. From the marriage until her husband became king in 2022, she was known as the Duchess of Cornwall. Camilla carries out public engagements representing the monarchy, often alongside her husband. She is also the patron, the president, or a member of numerous charities and organizations. Since 1994, Camilla has campaigned to raise awareness of osteoporosis, which has earned her several honors and awards. She has also raised awareness of issues such as rape, sexual abuse, literacy, animal welfare, and poverty. Camilla Rosemary Shand was born at King's College Hospital, London, on 17 July 1947. She grew up in the Lanes, an 18th-century country house in Plumpton, East Sussex, and a three-story house in South Kensington, her family's second home. Her parents were British Army officer-turned-businessman Major Bruce Shand and his wife the Honourable. Rosalind Cubitt, daughter of Roland Cubitt, 3rd Baron Ashcombe. She has a younger sister, Annabelle Elliott, and had a younger brother, Mark Shand. One of her maternal great-grandmothers, Alice Keppel, was a mistress of King Edward VII from 1898 to 1910. On 1 November 1947, Shand was baptized at St. Peter's Church, Furl, East Sussex. Her mother Rosalind was a charity worker, who volunteered at the Chaley Heritage Foundation, which helps young children with disabilities, in the 1960s and 1970s located at North Chaley, East Sussex, while her father had various business interests after retiring from the army. He was most notably a partner in Block, Gray and Block, a firm of wine merchants in South Audley Street, Mayfair, later joining Ellis, Son and Vidler of Hastings and London. During her childhood, Shand became an avid reader through the influence of her father, who read to her frequently. She grew up with dogs and cats, and, at a young age, learned how to ride a pony by joining pony club camps, going on to win rosettes at community gym Connas. According to her, childhood was perfect in every way. Biographer Giles Brandirth describes her background and childhood. Camilla is often described as having had an Enid Blyton sort of childhood. In fact, it was much grander than that. Camilla, as a little girl, may have had some personality traits of George, the tomboy girl among the famous five, but Enid Blyton's children were essentially middle-class children and the Shands, without question, belonged to the upper class. The Shands had position and they had help. Help in the house, help in the garden, help with children. They were gentry. They opened their garden for the local Conservative Party Association Summer Fete. Enough said. When she was five, Shand was sent to Dumbrells, a coeducational school in Ditchling Village. 
She left Dumbrells at the age of 10 to attend Queensgate School in Queensgate, South Kensington. After an on and off relationship for years, Parker Bowles and Shan's engagement was announced in the Times in 1973. Sally Bedell Smith claimed that the announcement was sent out by the pair's parents without their knowledge, which forced Parker Bowles to propose. They married on 4 July 1973 in a Roman Catholic ceremony at the Guards Chapel, Wellington Barracks, in London. Shand was 25 years old and Parker Bowles 33. Her wedding dress was designed by British fashion house Belleville Sassoon, and the bridesmaids included Parker Bowles's goddaughter Lady Emma Herbert. It was considered the Society Wedding of the Year, with 800 guests. Royal guests present at the ceremony and reception included Queen Elizabeth II's daughter Anne, the Queen's sister Margaret, and Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. The couple made their home in Wiltshire, purchasing Bolahide Manor in Allington and later Middlewick House in Corsham. They had two children. Tom, born 18 December 1974, who is a godson of King Charles III, and Laura, born 1 January 1978. Both children were brought up in their father's Roman Catholic faith, particularly during the lifetime of their paternal grandmother Anne Parker Bowles. However, Camilla remained an Anglican and did not convert to Roman Catholicism. Laura attended a Catholic girls' school, but married in an Anglican church, and Tom did not attend Ampleforth College as his father had, but Eton, and was married outside the Catholic church. Tom, like his father, is in remainder to the earldom of Macclesfield. In December 1994, after 21 years of marriage, the Parker Bowleses issued divorce proceedings on the grounds they had been living separately for years. In July of that year, Camilla's mother Rosalind had died from osteoporosis, and her father later described this as a difficult time for her. After an on and off relationship for years, Parker Bowles and Shan's engagement was announced in the Times in 1973. Sally Bedell Smith claimed that the announcement was sent out by the pair's parents without their knowledge, which forced Parker Bowles to propose. They married on 4 July 1973 in a Roman Catholic ceremony at the Guards Chapel, Wellington Barracks, in London. Shand was 25 years old and Parker Bowles 33. Her wedding dress was designed by British fashion house Belleville Sassoon, and the bridesmaids included Parker Bowles's goddaughter Lady Emma Herbert. It was considered the Society Wedding of the Year, with 800 guests. Royal guests present at the ceremony and reception included Queen Elizabeth II's daughter Anne, the Queen's sister Margaret, and Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. The couple made their home in Wiltshire, purchasing Bolahide Manor in Allington and later Middlewick House in Corsham. They had two children. Tom, born 18 December 1974, who is a godson of King Charles III, and Laura, born 1 January 1978. Both children were brought up in their father's Roman Catholic faith, particularly during the lifetime of their paternal grandmother Anne Parker Bowles. However, Camilla remained an Anglican and did not convert to Roman Catholicism. Laura attended a Catholic girls' school, but married in an Anglican church, and Tom did not attend Ampleforth College as his father had, but Eton, and was married outside the Catholic church. Tom, like his father, is in remainder to the earldom of Macclesfield. In December 1994, after 21 years of marriage, the Parker Bowleses issued divorce proceedings on the grounds they had been living separately for years. In July of that year, Camilla's mother Rosalind had died from osteoporosis, and her father later described this as a difficult time for her. The divorce was finalized on 3 March 1995.
A year later, Andrew married Rosemary Pittman, who died in 2010. Camilla Shand reportedly met Prince Charles in mid-1971. Andrew Parker Bowles had ended his relationship with Shand in 1970 and was courting Princess Anne, Charles's sister. Though Shand and Charles belonged to the same social circle and occasionally attended the same events, they had not formally met. Their biographer Branderth states the couple did not first meet at a polo match, as has been commonly believed. Instead, they first met at the home of their friend Lucia Santa Cruz, who formally introduced them. They became close friends and eventually began a romantic relationship, which was well known within their social circle. As a couple, they regularly met at polo matches at Smith's Lawn in Windsor Great Park, where Charles often played polo. They also became part of a set at Annabelle's in Berkeley Square. As the relationship grew more serious, Charles met Shan's family in Plumpton and he introduced her to some members of his family. The relationship was put on hold after Charles traveled overseas to join the Royal Navy in early 1973, and ended abruptly afterward. There have been different explanations for why the couple's relationship ended. Robert Lacey wrote in his 2008 book Royal. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II that Charles had met Shan too early, and that he had not asked her to wait for him when he went overseas for military duties. Sarah Bradford wrote in her 2007 book Diana that a member of the close circle of his great-uncle Lord Mountbatten claimed Mountbatten arranged for Charles to be taken overseas to end the relationship with Shand, to make way for an engagement between Charles and his granddaughter Amanda Natchbull. Some sources suggest Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother did not approve of the match with Shand because she wanted Charles to marry one of the Spencer family granddaughters of her close friend Lady Fairmoy. Other sources also suggest Shand did not want to marry Charles but instead wanted to marry Andrew Parker Bowles, having had an on-and-off relationship with Parker Bowles since the late 1960s, or that Charles had decided he would not marry until he was 30 years old. Overall, the majority of royal biographers have agreed that Charles would not have been allowed to marry Shand had he sought permission to do so. According to Charles's cousin and godmother Patricia Natchbull, second Countess Mountbatten of Burma, some palace courtiers at that time deemed Shand unsuitable as a prospective consort. In 2005, she stated, with hindsight, you can say that Charles should have married Camilla when he first had the chance. They were ideally suited, we know that now. But it wasn't possible. Quote opening square bracket dot. It wouldn't have been possible, not then. Nevertheless, they remained friends. In August 1979, Lord Mountbatten was assassinated by the Provisional Irish Republican Army. Charles was grief-stricken by his death, and reportedly relied heavily on Camilla Parker Bowles, as she was now known, for solace. During this period rumors began circulating, among close friends of the Parker Bowleses and in polo-playing communities, that Camilla and Charles had rekindled their intimate relationship. A source close to Parker Bowles confirmed that by 1980 they had indeed rekindled as lovers. There are also claims by royal staff that it occurred earlier. Parker Bowles's husband, Andrew, reportedly approved of the affair, while he had numerous lovers throughout their marriage. Nevertheless, Charles soon began a relationship with Lady Diana Spencer, and the two married in 1981. The book and tape immediately damaged Charles's public image. Meanwhile, the media vilified Parker Bowles. In 1994, Charles finally spoke about his relationship with Parker Bowles in Charles, the private man, the public role with Jonathan Dimbleby. He told Dimbleby in the interview, Mrs. Parker Bowles is a great friend of mine. Dot. 
a friend for a very long time. She will continue to be a friend for a very long time. He later admitted in the interview that the relationship between him and Parker Bowles was rekindled after his marriage had irretrievably broken down in 1986. Following both of their divorces, Prince Charles declared his relationship with Parker Bowles was non-negotiable. Charles was aware that the relationship was receiving a lot of negative publicity, and appointed Mark Bolland, whom he had employed in 1995 to refurbish his own image, to enhance Parker Bowles's public profile. Parker Bowles occasionally became Charles's unofficial companion at events. In 1999, the couple made their first public appearance together at the Ritz London Hotel, where they attended a birthday party. About 200 photographers and reporters from around the world were there to witness them together. In 2000, she accompanied Charles to Scotland for a number of official engagements, and in 2001, she became president of the Royal Osteoporosis Society, ROS, which introduced her to the public. Parker Bowles later met Queen Elizabeth II, for the first time since the relationship was made public, at the 60th birthday party of the former King Constantine II of Greece, in 2000. This meeting was seen as an apparent seal of approval by the Queen on Parker Bowles's relationship with Prince Charles. After a series of appearances at public and private venues, the Queen invited Parker Bowles to her Golden Jubilee celebrations in 2002. She sat in the royal box behind the Queen for one of the concerts at Buckingham Palace. Charles reportedly paid privately for two full-time security staff to provide protection for his partner. Although Parker Bowles maintained her residence, Ray Millhouse, which she purchased in 1995, near Lackick in Wiltshire, she then moved into Clarence House, Charles's household and official residence since 2003. In 2004, Parker Bowles accompanied Charles on almost all of his official events, including a high-profile visit together to the annual Highland Games in Scotland. Throughout, the media speculated on when they would announce their engagement and as time went by, polls conducted in the UK showed overall support for the marriage. Despite this image rehabilitation, Parker Bowles received backlash from supporters of Diana who wrote to national newspapers to air their views, especially after Charles's wedding to Parker Bowles was announced. This sentiment was later parodied by Generation Z internet trolls on Facebook and TikTok through fake fan pages and accounts dedicated to Diana. On 10 February 2005, Clarence House announced that Parker Bowles and the Prince of Wales were engaged. As an engagement ring, Charles gave Parker Bowles a diamond ring that was believed to have been given to his grandmother, the Queen Mother, when she gave birth to Charles's mother. The ring comprised a square-cut diamond with three diamond baguettes on each side. As the future Supreme Governor of the Church of England, the prospect of Charles marrying a divorcee was seen as controversial, but with the consent of the Queen, the government, and the Church of England, the couple were able to wed. The Queen, Prime Minister Tony Blair, and Archbishop of Canterbury Rowan Williams offered their best wishes in statements to the media. The marriage was to have been on 8 April 2005, and was to take place in a civil ceremony at Windsor Castle, with a subsequent religious service of blessing at St. George's Chapel. However, to conduct a civil marriage at Windsor Castle would oblige the venue to obtain a license for civil marriages, which it did not have. A condition of such a license is that the licensed venue must be available for a period of one year to anyone wishing to be married there, and as the royal family did not wish to make Windsor Castle available to the public for civil marriages, the venue was changed to the town hall at Windsor Guildhall. On 4 April, it was announced that the marriage would be delayed by one day to allow the Prince of Wales and some of the invited dignitaries to attend the funeral of Pope John Paul II. On 9 April 2005, the marriage ceremony was held.
The parents of Charles and Camilla did not attend. Instead, Camilla's son Tom and Charles's son Prince William acted as witnesses to the union. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh did attend the service of blessing. Afterwards, a reception was held by the Queen for the newlyweds at Windsor Castle. Performers included the St. George's Chapel Choir, the Philharmonia Orchestra, and Welsh composer Aelin Hadenot. As a wedding gift, the Marinsky Theatre Trust in St. Petersburg brought a Belarusian mezzo-soprano singer, Ekaterina Semenchuk, to the UK to perform a special song for the couple. Following the wedding, the couple travelled to the Prince's country home in Scotland, Burkhall, and carried out their first public duties together during their honeymoon. After becoming Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla automatically acquired rank as the second highest woman in the British Order of Precedence, after Queen Elizabeth II, and as typically fifth or sixth in the orders of precedence of her other realms, following the Queen, the relevant Viceroy, the Duke of Edinburgh, and the Prince of Wales. It was revealed that the Queen altered the royal order of precedence for private occasions, placing the Duchess fourth, after the Queen, the Princess Royal, and Princess Alexandra. Within two years of the marriage, the Queen extended Camilla visible tokens of membership in the royal family. She lent Camilla the Greville Tiara, which previously belonged to the Queen Mother, and granted her the badge of the royal family order of Elizabeth II. After their wedding, Clarence House, the official residence of Prince Charles, also became Camilla's official residence. The couple also stay at Burkhall for holiday events, and Highgrove House in Gloucestershire for family gatherings. In 2008, they took up residence at LL Winniewer Maud, Wales, where they stay on their visit to Wales every year in the summer and for other occasions. To spend time alone with her children and grandchildren, Camilla still maintains her home Ray Mill House, in which she resided from 1995 to 2003. According to an undated statement from Clarence House, Camilla used to be a smoker but has not smoked for many years. Though no details were publicly released, it was confirmed in March 2007 that Camilla had undergone a hysterectomy. In April 2010, she fractured her left leg while hill walking in Scotland. In November 2010, Camilla and Charles were indirectly involved in student protests when their car was attacked by protesters. Clarence House later released a statement on the incident. A car carrying Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall was attacked by protesters but the couple were unharmed. On 9 April 2012, the 7th wedding anniversary of the Duchess and the Prince of Wales, the Queen appointed the Duchess to the Royal Victorian Order. The pub opened in 2016 and is named the Duchess of Cornwall Inn. On 9 June 2016, the Queen appointed the Duchess as a member of the British Privy Council. On 1 January 2022, she made Camilla a Royal Lady of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. On 14 February 2022, Camilla tested positive for COVID-19 four days after husband had also contracted it, and began self-isolating. She and her husband received their first doses of a COVID-19 vaccine in February 2021. In March 2022 and amid the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Camilla made a substantial donation to the Daily Mail's refugee campaign. Camilla's first solo engagement as Duchess of Cornwall was a visit to Southampton General Hospital. She attended the Trooping the Colour for the first time in June 2005, making her appearance on the balcony of Buckingham Palace afterwards. The Duchess made her inaugural overseas tour in November 2005, when she visited the United States, and met President George W. Bush and First Lady Laura Bush at the White House. Afterward they visited New Orleans to see the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and met some of the residents whose lives were changed drastically by the hurricane.
In March 2006, the couple visited Egypt, Saudi Arabia and India. In 2007, she conducted the naming ceremonies for HMS Astute and the new Cunard cruise ship, MS Queen Victoria. In November 2007, she toured with the Prince of Wales on a four-day visit to Turkey. In 2008, she and the Prince of Wales toured the Caribbean, Japan, Brunei and Indonesia. In 2009, they toured Chile, Brazil, Ecuador, Italy and Germany. Their visit to the Holy See in Italy included a meeting with Pope Benedict XVI. They later visited Canada. In early 2010, they visited Hungary, the Czech Republic and Poland. Camilla was unable to carry out her engagements on their tour of Eastern Europe after developing a trapped nerve in her back. In October 2010, she accompanied the Prince of Wales to Delhi, India, for the opening of the 2010 Commonwealth Games. In March 2011, the Duchess and the Prince of Wales visited Portugal, Spain, and Morocco, visiting the heads of state of each country. In June 2011, the Duchess alone represented the British royal family at the 125th Wimbledon Tennis Championships in Wimbledon. In August 2011, the Duchess accompanied the Prince of Wales to Tottenham to visit the aftermath of the London riots. The couple later went to visit with Tottenham residents in February 2012, meeting with local shop owners six months after the riots to see how they were doing. In London on the 11th of September 2011, the Duchess attended the 10th anniversary memorial service of the 9-11 attacks, along with the Prime Minister, David Cameron, and the Prince of Wales. In November 2011, the Duchess travelled with the Prince of Wales to tour the Commonwealth and Arab states of the Persian Gulf. They toured South Africa and Tanzania, and met with those countries' respective presidents, Jacob Zuma and Jakaya Kikwete. In March 2012, the Duchess and the Prince of Wales visited Norway, Sweden and Denmark to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. In May 2012, the royal couple undertook a four-day trip to Canada as part of the Jubilee celebrations. In November 2012, the Duchess and the Prince of Wales visited Australia, New Zealand and Papua New Guinea for a two-week Jubilee tour. During the Australian tour, they attended the 2012 Melbourne Cup, where the Duchess presented the Melbourne Cup to the winner of the race. In 2013, they went on a tour to Jordan and met with King Abdullah II and his wife, Queen Rania. They visited Syrian refugee camps of the Civil War. She is also the patron of a non-British body, the P.G. Wodehouse Society of the Netherlands. Camilla is the Honorary Commodore-in-Chief of the Royal Navy Medical Service. In this role, she visited the training ship HMS Excellent in January 2012, to award medals to naval medical teams returning from service in Afghanistan. She is also an honorary member of other patronages and in February 2012, she was elected a bencher of Gray's Inn. In February 2013, she was appointed Chancellor of the University of Aberdeen, a role which is ceremonial and involves conferring graduates with their degrees and took up the office in June 2013. She is the first female Chancellor of the University of Aberdeen and only member of the royal family to hold the post since it was created in 1860. In 2015, her presidency of the Women of the World Festival, an annual festival that celebrates the achievements of women and girls as well as looking at the obstacles they face across the world, notably domestic violence, was announced. In 2018 and 2020, she became the vice patron of the Royal Commonwealth Society and the Royal Academy of Dance, respectively, of which Queen Elizabeth II was patron. In March 2022, as president of the Royal Voluntary Service, 
Camilla launched the organization's Platinum Champions Awards to honor 70 volunteers nominated by the public for their efforts in improving lives in their communities. In the same month she was made patron of London's National Theatre by Queen Elizabeth II, a role previously held by her stepdaughter-in-law, the Duchess of Sussex. She is also the patron of a non-British body, the P.G. Wodehouse Society of the Netherlands. Camilla is the Honorary Commodore-in-Chief of the Royal Navy Medical Service. In this role, she visited the training ship HMS Excellent in January 2012, to award medals to naval medical teams returning from service in Afghanistan. She is also an honorary member of other patronages and in February 2012, she was elected a bencher of Gray's Inn. In February 2013, she was appointed Chancellor of the University of Aberdeen, a role which is ceremonial and involves conferring graduates with their degrees and took up the office in June 2013. She is the first female Chancellor of the University of Aberdeen and only member of the royal family to hold the post since it was created in 1860. In 2015, her presidency of the Women of the World Festival, an annual festival that celebrates the achievements of women and girls as well as looking at the obstacles they face across the world, notably domestic violence, was announced. In 2018 and 2020, she became the vice patron of the Royal Commonwealth Society and the Royal Academy of Dance, respectively, of which Queen Elizabeth II was patron. In March 2022, as president of the Royal Voluntary Service, Camilla launched the organization's Platinum Champions Awards to honor 70 volunteers nominated by the public for their efforts in improving lives in their communities. In the same month she was made patron of London's National Theatre by Queen Elizabeth II, a role previously held by her stepdaughter-in-law, the Duchess of Sussex. Her maternal grandmother also died from the disease in 1986. She became patron of the charity in 1997 and was appointed president in 2001 in a highly publicized event, accompanied by the Prince of Wales. In 2002, she launched a mini-book, A Skeleton Guide to a Healthy You, Vitamins and Minerals which aims to help women protect themselves from the disease. The following month, she attended the Roundtable of International Women Leaders to examine barriers to reimbursement for diagnosis and treatment of osteoporosis conference along with 13 eminent women from around the world. The event was organized by the International Osteoporosis Foundation and hosted by Queen Rania of Jordan and during it, she made her first public speech. The international conference which took place in Lisbon, Portugal, brought together worldwide public figures to focus on osteoporosis treatment and called for government assistance around the world. In 2004, she attended another conference in Dublin, organized by the Irish Osteoporosis Society and the following year visited the National Institutes of Health in Maryland, U.S. to give a presentation on osteoporosis to high-profile health figures. In 2006, Camilla launched the Big Bone Walk campaign, leading 90 children and people with osteoporosis for a 10-mile walk and climb around Loch Muick at the Balmoral Estate in Scotland to raise money for the charity. The campaign raised £200,000, and continues almost every year as one of the fundraisers for the charity. In 2011, she appeared in the BBC radio drama The Archers, playing herself, to raise the profile of the disease, and in 2013 teamed up with the television series Strictly Come Dancing to raise funds for the National Osteoporosis Society. By 2006 she had spoken at more than 60 functions on the disease in the UK and around the world and had also opened bone scanning units and osteoporosis centres to help people with the disease. Almost every year, Camilla attends and partakes in World Osteoporosis Day, by attending events around the UK on 20 October. She continues to attend conferences around the world, and meets with health experts to further discuss the disease. 
For her work on raising awareness of osteoporosis around the world, Camilla was honored with an Ethel Lefrak Award in 2005 from an American charity and received the Cohn Foundation Award in 2007 from the National Osteoporosis Society. In July 2007, the Duchess opened the Duchess of Cornwall Center for Osteoporosis at the Royal Cornwall Hospital, Truro. The same year, King's College London awarded her an honorary fellowship for raising the profile of osteoporosis. In 2009, the National Osteoporosis Society created the Duchess of Cornwall Award, which recognizes achievements in the field of osteoporosis. In 2016, she received an honorary doctorate from the University of Southampton. In 2019, the National Osteoporosis Society was renamed as the Royal Osteoporosis Society. After visiting nine rape crisis centers in 2009 and hearing accounts from survivors, Camilla began raising awareness and advocating ways to help victims of rape and sexual abuse to overcome and move past their trauma. According to the Times, the stories Her Royal Highness heard on her first visit and the stories she heard subsequently have left her with a strong desire to raise awareness about rape and sexual abuse and to try to help those affected. She often speaks to victims at a rape crisis centre in Croydon and visits other centres to meet staff and victims, around the UK and during overseas tours. In 2010, alongside the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, she opened a centre in Ealing, West London, for rape victims. In 2011, the Duchess opened the Oakwood Place Essex Sexual Assault Referral Centre at Brentwood Community Hospital in Essex. Camilla is patron of the Wiltshire Bobby Van Trust, which provides home security for victims of crime and domestic abuse, and of Safe Lives, a charity that campaigns against domestic abuse and violence. In 2013, she held a meeting at Clarence House which brought together rape victims and rape support groups. Director of Public Prosecutions Keir Starmer and Home Secretary Theresa May were guests at the occasion. At the occasion, she introduced a plan to help the victims. About 750 wash bags, created by her Clarence House staff and packed with luxury toiletries, were distributed to victims at the centers. The Duchess thought of the gesture after she visited a center in Derbyshire and asked victims what they would like to help them feel at ease after the trauma and forensic examinations. According to Clarence House, the event was the first meeting of high-profile figures to focus exclusively on rape and sexual abuse subjects. The same year, the Duchess traveled to Northern Ireland and opened the Rowan, a sexual assault and referral center at Antrimaria Hospital which was the first center to provide help and comfort to rape and sexual abuse victims in Northern Ireland. In May 2014, during the Royal Tour of Canada, the Duchess privately met with two women who had left violent homes and were provided long-term support and shelter by Alice House of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. In March 2016, during a tour to the Western Balkans with her husband, the Duchess visited UNICEF programs in Montenegro and while there, she discussed child sexual abuse and was shown an exclusive preview of a new app designed to protect children from online sexual abuse. The following year, the Duchess partnered with retail and pharmacy chain Boots to create a line of wash bags which will be given to sexual assault referral centers around the UK. In September 2021, Camilla was named as patron of the Mirabel Centre, Nigeria's first sexual assault referral centre. In October 2021, the Duchess gave a speech at the launch of Shameless, a project endorsed by the Women of the World Foundation and Birkbeck, University of London looking to educate people on sexual violence. She expressed her shock at the murder of Sarah Everard and urged both men and women to break down the culture of silence surrounding sexual assault. In February 2022, Camilla, with former Prime Minister Theresa May, supported a campaign initiated by the NHS England to encourage survivors of sexual and domestic abuse to come forward for help.
The campaign also highlighted the support offered at sexual assault referral centers, SARCs, in England. The campaign was released on the first day of Sexual Abuse and Sexual Violence Awareness Week. She also visited Paddington Haven, a sexual assault referral center in West London and Thames Valley Partnership, a charity for domestic abuse survivors in Aylesbury. Being an avid reader, Camilla is an advocate for literacy. She is the patron of the National Literacy Trust and other literacy charities. She often visits schools, libraries and children organizations to read to young children. Additionally, she partakes in literacy celebrations, including International Literacy Day and World Book Day. In 2011, she attended the Hay Festival to support children literacy and while there, she donated books to the Oxfam bookshops. In the same year, she donated money to support the Evening Standards Literacy Campaign. The Duchess has also launched and continues to launch campaigns and programs to promote literacy. In a similar vein, she is a staunch supporter of credit unions, which she states are a real force for change in the financial landscape, serve the people, not profit, and provide a friendly financial community where members mutually benefit from advice, as well as savings accounts and loans. She also supports healthy eating, anti-FGM, arts and heritage-related organizations and programs. Camilla topped Richard Blackwell's list of 10 Worst Dressed Women in 1994, and her name appeared on it again in 1995, 2001 and 2006. In the years after her marriage, Camilla has developed her own style and tried outfits and ensembles by notable fashion designers. She is said to prefer signature tee and shirt dress styles, and favors tones of nude, white and navy, and round necklines. She has also been praised for her jewelry collections. In 2018, Tatler named her on its list of Britain's best dressed people, praising her for her hat choices which have given millinery a good name. In a similar vein, she is a staunch supporter of credit unions, which she states are a real force for change in the financial landscape, serve the people, not profit, and provide a friendly financial community where members mutually benefit from advice, as well as savings accounts and loans. She also supports healthy eating, anti-FGM, arts and heritage-related organizations and programs. Camilla topped Richard Blackwell's list of 10 Worst Dressed Women in 1994, and her name appeared on it again in 1995, 2001 and 2006. In the years after her marriage, Camilla has developed her own style and tried outfits and ensembles by notable fashion designers. She is said to prefer signature tee and shirt dress styles, and favors tones of nude, white and navy, and round necklines. She has also been praised for her jewelry collections. In 2018, Tatler named her on its list of Britain's best dressed people, praising her for her hat choices which have given millinery a good name. In a similar vein, she is a staunch supporter of credit unions, which she states are a real force for change in the financial landscape serve the people, not profit, and provide a friendly financial community where members mutually benefit from advice, as well as savings accounts and loans. She also supports healthy eating, anti-FGM, arts and heritage-related organizations and programs. Camilla topped Richard Blackwell's list of 10 Worst Dressed Women in 1994, and her name appeared on it again in 1995, 2001 and 2006. In the years after her marriage, Camilla has developed her own style and tried outfits and ensembles by notable fashion designers. She is said to prefer signature tee and shirt dress styles, and favors tones of nude, white and navy, and round necklines. She has also been praised for her jewelry collections.
In 2018, Tatler named her on its list of Britain's best dressed people, praising her for her hat choices which have given millinery a good name. In a similar vein, she is a staunch supporter of credit unions, which she states are a real force for change in the financial landscape, serve the people, not profit, and provide a friendly financial community where members mutually benefit from advice, as well as savings accounts and loans. She also supports healthy eating, anti-FGM, arts and heritage-related organizations and programs. Camilla topped Richard Blackwell's list of 10 Worst Dressed Women in 1994, and her name appeared on it again in 1995, 2001 and 2006. In the years after her marriage, Camilla has developed her own style and tried outfits and ensembles by notable fashion designers. She is said to prefer signature tee and shirt dress styles, and favors tones of nude, white and navy, and round necklines. She has also been praised for her jewelry collections. In 2018, Tatler named her on its list of Britain's best dressed people, praising her for her hat choices which have given millinery a good name. The shoot took place at Clarence House, and the outfits were chosen from her own wardrobe. The 17th of July 1947 to the 4th of July 1973. Miss Camilla Rosemary Shan. The 4th of July 1973 to the 3rd of March 1995. Mrs. Andrew Parker Bowles. The 3rd of March 1995 to the 9th of April 2005. Mrs. Camilla Parker Bowles. The 9th of April 2005 to the 8th of September 2022. Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall in Scotland, 9 April 2005 to the 8th of September 2022. Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Rothesay, the 8th of September 2022 present. Her Majesty the Queen Consort legally. Camilla was Princess of Wales but adopted the feminine form of her husband's highest ranking subsidiary title, Duke of Cornwall, because the title Princess of Wales became strongly associated with its previous holder, Diana. She additionally bore the titles Duchess of Rothesay, Countess of Chester, and Baroness of Renfrew. In 2021, upon the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles inherited his father's titles, and Camilla thus became Duchess of Edinburgh. As Charles succeeded his mother as sovereign, Camilla automatically became Queen Consort in accordance with English common law. Clarence House however stated on the occasion of their wedding in 2005 that she would adopt the style of princess consort instead of queen consort, but there is no legal or historical precedent for such a title. In her 2022 Accession Day message, published to mark the 70th anniversary of her reign, Elizabeth II stated that it was her sincere wish for Camilla to be known as queen consort upon Charles's accession to the throne. Camilla is styled Queen Consort, per the official statement released by Buckingham Palace announcing the death of Elizabeth II on 8 September 2022. When conversing with the Queen Consort, the correct etiquette is to address her initially as Your Majesty and thereafter as Ma'am, pronounced, with a short, a, uh, as in jam. Although thus far she has been referred to as Queen Consort in statements and briefings from Buckingham Palace, as the wife of the King, technically she is Her Majesty the Queen and entitled to be referred to as the Queen. Historically, Queens Regnant and Consort alike have been referred to as the Queen during their incumbency. The 7th of June 2005 Commemorative Medal for the Centennial of Saskatchewan the 30th of October 2007. Royal Family Order of Queen Elizabeth II. The 9th of April 2012. Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, GCVO. The 3rd of November 2012. Companion of the Order of the Star of Melanesia, CSM. 
the 3rd of November 2012. Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal, Papua New Guinean version. The 1st of January 2022. Royal Lady of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, LG Netherlands, 2013, recipient of King Willem Alexander Inauguration Medal France, 2014, Grand Cross of the National Order of Merit Mexico, 2015, Sash of the Order of the Aztec Eagle The 13th of September 2007, Honorary Fellow of King's College London 2011. Honorary Liveryman of the Worshipful Company of Joiners and Sealers 2013-present. University of Aberdeen, Chancellor The 9th of June 2016. Member of the Privy Council, PC 2017. Liveryman of the Worshipful Company of Vintners 2017. Honorary Liveryman of the Worshipful Company of Plumbers 2013. University of Aberdeen, Doctor of Laws, LLD The 11th of February 2016 University of Southampton, Doctor of Science, DSC The 16th of March 2018. University of Chester, Doctor of Letters, D. Lit. Australia 2012. Colonel-in-Chief, the Royal Australian Corps of Military Police Canada 2011. Colonel-in-Chief, the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada United Kingdom 2006. Commodore-in-Chief of the Naval Medical Services 2007. Lady Sponsor of HMS Astute 2007. Royal Colonel of the 4th Battalion of the Rifles 2008. Honorary Air Commodore of RAF Halton 2008. Honorary Air Commodore of RAF Leeming